1984, I didn't read 1984 because I was really young and couldn't read that well. And even if I could have, I probably wouldn't have read it because who wants to read a big, fat, boring book about a miserable year anyway? In 1984, I grew up beneath my big brother Carlos's watchful eyes. I'd eventually learned that my big brother Carlos's eyes were so enlarged because he had a condition. His nickname was El Tecolote. El Tecolote watched everything I did with those big, aqueous, mm -hmm. owl-like eyes. He watched everything I did with that condition, El Tecolote. Mm -hmm. In 1984, I didn't read Schopenhauer, even though I would eventually read Schopenhauer in high school, a time when I flexed my cerebral cortex like a Tony Atlas bicep because somehow I knew more than anyone did at my school, even though they didn't know it yet. I'd read Schopenhauer and they hadn't. This profound truth, however, did little to stop the sweaty jock fixated on snapping wet towels across my back. If I could have, I would have read Schopenhauer in 1984. If I could have, I would have stolen every single towel from every single school gymnasium in the world and hid them in the basement of some unidentified human torture museum on the moon. In 1984, my favorite word to write on papers besides my name, even though it wasn't quite a name, was 84. The power to abbreviate 1984 turned me on, even though it wasn't quite a word. In 1984, my cousin liked to say this turns me on whenever we watch Van Halen's Hot Teacher video. I didn't quite know what he meant, but I liked the way this turns me on sounded, the way it felt in my mouth. In 1984, I slept with a humidifier on that sounded like one of those creepy slea stacks from Land of the Lost, except my humidifier comforted me instead of creeping me out like those slea stacks with big aqueous eyes like my brother Tecolotes. That thing's going to warp your bedroom furniture, my mom complained, but it was the only way I could dream good dreams, I told her. To dream good dreams, I said. In 1984, my mom read me Mayakovsky before I fell asleep. In 1984, my catechism teacher sent me home when I recited a cloud and trousers instead of three Hail Marys. In 1984, I ate a large Papa Bill's pizza by myself and couldn't sleep for two nights. My mom finally believed me when I clutched my stomach and complained, I think I'm lactose intolerant. In 1984, I declared pizza my old most favorite food. In 1984, my bedtime was 8 p.m. In 1984, I pointed out my friends from my window, tap, tap, while they played hide and seek without me, 8.02 p.m. In 1984, I wished library books had buttons, a joystick, and a high score to beat. In 1984, I told the neighborhood El Tecolote raised his arms in the air one night and caught a shooting star with a muddy tube sock he stretched open high above his head. In 1984, El Tecolote wrote an anonymous poem for a girl he liked that used the word betwixt in it. I found it in the drawer where El Tecolote kept his chones. In 1984, my grandpa taught me how to cut rain clouds with a machete. That spring, we made wet confetti of the nimbai and stopped rain just like that. It was weird and kind of sad, though, because for some reason or another, I felt an immediate and inconsolable guilt when I saw a single bird standing on a tree branch looking up at an empty sky. I learned something else that day besides how to cut rain clouds to stop the rain. Someone or something might need water more than I do at any given moment. In 1984, Weichel's sister Gloria told me that it happened when her cousin Diego stole a pair of wings made of zigzag paper and jumped from the old central water tower. He got too close to the sun, she said, way too high, and with his wings on fire, he fell down and couldn't survive the fall. But he was brave, she said, and looked so beautiful up there. I guess that's what big kids tell small kids when they need to explain things like death. In 1984, I memorized the lyrics to every song on Motley Crue's Shout Out the Devil album. Motley Crue's songs turned me on too. In 1984, my grandfather cried when Count Basie died. Even though Jose Alfredo Jimenez was our favorite singer, I cried too because my grandfather cried. In 1984, I sang Born in the USA whenever we crossed back into the States from Mexicali. My dad grumbled something unintelligibly. My mom laughed quietly into her sleeve and El Tecolote only stared into the night with a creepy grin on his face. In 1984, my dad had to pull over every time we traveled long distances because I was prone to car sickness. Puking on the side of the road with my mom holding a 7-Up near my mouth, I cried quite dramatically, how am I ever going to see Moscow? I still haven't been there. In 1984, I wrote a long and shaky scripted declaration on wide-ruled grade school paper reclaiming 1984 as my own. The final line, because it's mine and not that crazy viejas Grace Jones. In 1984, I woke up one night to El Tecolote crying, intermittently mumbling something to the bubbly saliva-sounding effect, I hate this condition, I hate this condition, I hate this condition. The next day, I snuck into El Tecolote's room to see if his anonymous love poem was still in his chones drawer. It wasn't. Somehow I knew it wouldn't be. In 1984, I prayed for El Tecolote and still do. 
1984, I loved everything at the speed of light. In 1984, I heard silence for the first time and kindly asked silence to quiet down. In 1984, I cracked a fortune cookie in half and read, Everything lasts forever but needn't be if one ever plans to breathe again. Because of that, I've always thought fortune cookies turned me on too.